So first and foremost, thank you for being here. Uh, there are a lot of cool things going on at the conference, and you're here with me, so I'm super humbled by that, and I really do appreciate it. So uh, before we get too much into this presentation, just a quick background on who I am. Uh, I'm a Rev Team Operator at Millennium Corporation. Uh, we support the uh, Threat Systems Management Office, which is under the Army. We are one of nine uh, NSA Rev Team uh, certified uh, Rev Teams from the Department of Defense. Uh, so we get to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I graduated from Auburn, or Eagle. Okay, didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and I'm still very, very better about the Final Four loss. It was absolute garbage, but I'm happy to talk about Auburn sports, uh, and I'll, I'll play along. So uh, anyway, certifications, if you care about those. Uh, my 15-minute claim to fame is I was in Magpie Magazine for literally the nerdiest thing you could possibly imagine. It was a device built out of ra a Raspberry Pi and Lego that actually scanned all of your Magic Gathering cards, uh, did optical character recognition to determine what the card names were, hit an API to tell you how much they were uh, in real time, or close to it. Uh, so a lot of people took that project and made it like way better, so uh, it, it's kind of cool to see like where that went. But anyways, that, that's kind of my claim to fame. And uh, this gentleman down here, I want to give a special thank you to Jason Johnson, who's sitting right there, uh, for helping me out going through all the equipment and, and procuring it. So uh, thanks, Jason, for, for being here and for helping out. So Okay, so don't forget to wipe. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but you know, I'm a child of the 80s, so, like, grow, so you know, make your grades, it's your birthday, going to Toys R Us is like the most exciting thing. Like I seriously remember running through the halls, like going straight to the Lego section or video games, and it was just, you know, Oh, it's pure bliss. It's so awesome. But as I got a little bit older and actually started using my own money to buy things, you know, I started noticing that, wow, these things are kind of expensive. So when Toys R Us went bankrupt in 2017, it really wasn't that uh, big of a surprise. Um, but they were having issues way, 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 way before that, uh, back in 2005. And we're not going to go into a, a, this isn't a business or economics talk, but uh, you can read all about how they pretty much mishandled a lot of things. Uh, so anyways, they declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy in, in September of 2017, and so they liquidated all their assets. And when they say liquidated all their assets, literally everything, including shelves, including all the equipment, which is where our story takes place. Uh, so it was really, really, uh, really crazy that they did that. Uh, but I, I did look up yesterday to kind of see the status of what's going on with them, and apparently they have reformed into True Kids, which is now a parent company of all of the Toys R Us brands. Uh, so I, I'm sure we'll see a resurgence uh, or a comeback, at least in uh, North America, because I know they're still active overseas. Um, so anyways, so my wife gives me a phone call. Uh, you know, this is back in uh, last summer or last March. So she gives me a phone call and she goes, hey, I'm at Toys R Us and I'm trying to buy some baby food and stuff for, for, my, for the toddler. And, I go, okay, that's cool. And she goes, you know, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, everything's on sale here. I said, well, yeah, I know that. And she's like, no, literally, I'm checking out the credit card uh, and the cash register and everything on sale, even when I'm fine. And so light bulbs go off. Like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. This is awesome. So I originally, my intention was just to buy this and tinker with it just for fun. But, you know, I got to say, I got to thinking, like, they're not offering a severance for Toys R Us employees. Like, something's going to be mishandled. I know it. So anyways, that's kind of where the, the, the chaos starts. So, uh, so thanks to my wife for, for actually letting me know about that. So real quick about the media, and I say how it was mishandled. Uh, so I was in Huntsville, Alabama. I don't know how the liquidation took place. Apparently, there was supposed to be a company that, that was supposed to come in, take all the equipment, uh, sanitize it. Um, but it's not clear how that was supposed to go. So I took to Reddit, doing a little OSINT, seeing what was out there. Uh, so apparently it wasn't, you know, siloed to Huntsville. It was a lot of other places. So these comments from these people are from Ohio uh, and California. I mean, all over the place. So it, it clearly was not streamlined. Uh, but, you know, the handheld scanners were unwiped. I mean, there was nothing there. They weren't reflashed. They weren't factory reset. None of that. Uh, somebody bought the, the Dell Occuplex, the little cash registers, the tower for those were only 40 bucks, and of course those weren't unwiped either, and those were, that's where all the credit card processing happened. Uh, they went through those little servers. Um, it doesn't look like anything was, uh, was updated. I can vouch for that after going through all the, uh, the OS and uh, all the applications that were on there. Um, somebody even had a wipe that was interrupted, and employee just flat out didn't care. It was like, well, here, just take it, So, uh, which seemed to be kind of the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the consensus amongst the other stores. So. 
And then, of course, some other people were like, yeah, that's really interesting that they weren't wiped. So I'm not a PCI compliance guy. I, don't, I can't talk any of this and how they should have done that. But I can tell you that uh, you're not supposed to get rid of things uh, without sanitizing them. So anyways, here's a Hackaday article that really, really spoke to kind of how things were handled. Uh, I kind of bolded the things that were, um, you know, really important. So, you know, again, they, they weren't going to be offered a severance, so really no one cared. So, um, and at the time, it didn't seem like there was even any HR uh, or, or um, any type of management direction on what they should actually be doing with this equipment. So, it's really no surprise that uh, they just got rid of it, as they did. Um, and here's kind of an, an interesting uh, picture I found too of somebody on Hackaday actually went through an abandoned Toys R Us and was going through and uh, they actually found boxes of employees' data, so social security numbers, uh, passwords to apparently like small vaults that were in there, like all kind of crazy stuff. Um, and it's kind of, I encourage you to go to that link because it is kind of interesting, kind of eerie, like going through that in an abandoned Toys R Us. So um, I could definitely see a horror movie being made of that. So what exactly did we find? The mistakes that were made. Uh, so unsupported legacy software, they had point of sell system uh, software that was on there that ended support, I think, in 2015. Uh, default passwords on all the Verifone point of sell systems, and we'll see what those are. Uh, the exact dates all the way back to 2007 when we were being warned about that. Social security numbers since 2008. I'm not sure how, why, when, where that wasn't picked up somewhere along the way. Uh, clear text credentials for all their external FTP sites and stored password generators for all password or for all the registers and other equipment. That's actually kind of common if you've ever done any type of deployment services. Uh, then you know that you know you have your unattended Panther files and whatnot. So, uh, so anyways, those are uh, those are some of the things we found. Some of the the bigger things. So what exactly by the numbers did we find? So we found approximately 231 uh, FTP passwords, uh, 39 social security numbers, uh, devices, there was about 17 cracked passwords. We found nine uh, going to various documents that were HR reviews. Um, you know, that's great that you're gonna put a password on there, but if it's four characters, it can be found in the Rocky list, probably not the best, right? Uh, HR personnel reviews, again, there were other, uh, um, uh, Passwords that were found for databases and other applications and employee IDs and why did I put employee IDs in there because they actually had uh, external applications like Workday where that actually is needed to be able to register for some of that but now they're bankrupt and it doesn't really matter but again this is a uh, it's poor practice that they, they left this kind of stuff on there so here's all the stuff we bought all in all is about eighteen hundred bucks um, worth of equipment uh, there's no telling what we could probably get for that on Craigslist so. Trying to figure out if we're going to sell it or maybe like do some like fun stuff with it. Uh, but anyways, this is all the the equipment we ended up getting, and so um, so you'll see here that there were some rack servers where that's where there where most of the uh, the stuff was stored. Um, Dell Optiplex that was for again the cash registers, uh, Cisco switches, routers, um, the, the Verifone's point of sale systems, <laughs> printers, some handheld scanners, and um, uh, and a little um, inventory system which is the Motorola. So. From what I could gather, here's the actual network diagram. Um, for those of you that are, have been in this type of industry, hopefully this is somewhat accurate, but this is what I could kind of gather. Um, so, like I said, really where all the bad stuff was taking place is on the 8809, which is the store number. That was the primary node and the secondary node. Uh, that's where all the, that's where everything, for the, most of the stuff was uh, stored that was, uh, that, that was pretty telling, so. So here are the servers. And here's a little pirate Jeffrey. Uh, so the BIOS password wasn't set, so the boot order was pretty easy to get to. All I had to do was stick in, stuck in Arch Linux because I was I had a 700 megabyte size um, CD, so I just plugged that in and just booted from the CD. Uh, classic Seth C hack, you know what that is? It's where you replace the sticky keys, uh, where you just simply uh, replace the executable with a command prompt, and so you go back to log in, boot from like boot regularly. Uh, push the uh, push the sticky keys and you get a command prop on your system. So add yourself, do whatever. So super easy there, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, the hard drive wasn't encrypted anyway, no BitLocker encryption, so uh, didn't make any of that very difficult. Uh, the three shares is where uh, we started pillaging and found uh, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And so just to give you guys an example of uh, some of the things, so here, because you know, pictures are doesn't count, right? 
So here's the, uh, here's the actual config file that had all the uh, external uh, FTP stuff. My goodness, it was tempting to go test all those, but that's illegal, and so I don't want to lose my clearance. Uh, so <laughs> definitely didn't do that, but I, I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if many of these uh, actually still worked. So um, that was the FTP. Uh, my data was actually in here, so I felt like I was kind of justified in going through this. Uh, I mentioned earlier that my wife bought some stuff from Babies R Us, uh, and lo and behold, there it is in the inventory uh, database. So wife was buying uh, cribs and other stuff. Uh, so yeah, so again, I felt kind of justified in all of this, but this didn't take any like lead hacking. Like it really didn't, because there was a web server there that if you just went through the logs, you could easily browse there. I just put this on a little LAN, and I browse to the uh, to one of the directories, and there's the startup password. So just log in the, uh, the database and uh, dump it. I mean, there's nothing too complicated about this. That, that's what just blows my mind. So, so that was the database uh, that had local, and it's not clear exactly how or why all of these things were structured this way because these were some local purchases, uh, but yet there's clearly you know some centralized database that has more inventory. So. It's not clear why you know these few purchases from the past couple of years were on there, but we may never know. So what else did we find on the servers? I mentioned we found a bunch of social security numbers. So I couldn't believe this. Maybe this is how things were done in 2008, but this was some Excel spreadsheet where they were actually scheduling people to go work, and they had them organized by social security number. Um, not sure why they did that, but it was still there. And it blows my mind that no one ever removed that or ran like a regular expression script to like try to find that. Blows my mind. Um, and so I didn't believe that it was true. So I actually did a little bit of OSINT. Lo and behold, these actually are real people that worked there uh, years and years ago. So uh, again, just, just mind blowing that, that that actually happened. So uh, like I said, there was some uh, password protected documents. Um, Again, not, nothing too late here. I mean, we're, we're doing the Rock U list against these, and so uh, it was a four-character password, and we were able to break into you know all the Word documents, and Excel documents, and yeah, it's just not a good day for Toys R Us. So, device passwords. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, those of you that have done uh, unattended installation using Windows deployment services, uh, nothing too crazy to see that you know you will find passwords uh, on certain servers. Uh, again, this should have been wiped. Uh, if you had gotten into the network, it would have been trivial to find all these things and come through it. Uh, there are PowerShell scripts on how they actually generated all of this. Unfortunately, uh, again, this is where things are really screwy with this. Uh, these actually did not work on a lot of our systems uh, that we had access to. So I don't know if they changed those uh, before they got rid of them. So maybe they did something right. Uh, but a lot of these would not work for uh, the individual devices that we had. So, okay. Um, so moving on to the Verifone point of sale system. This kind of blew my mind too. Is that uh, this dates all the way back to 2007? If you push one five and nine at the same time, it will bring up system mode. There is one of two default passwords on these things, and guess what? One of them worked. So uh, I, I, I'm not a you know I, I'm not an expert at, at uh, uh, credit card systems, but you could stick a little SD card and copy all the files off there for the day. Uh, so that, that's kind of cool. Uh, and I'm sure you could do some really nasty stuff with this. Um, but still, it, it's it's kind of mind blowing that you know I, this comp this is a, a very large company that that has pretty support, um, pretty poor practices. So, anyways, I found that interesting too. So the Dell Opti Miniplex Tower. So uh, this is where the I talk about the outdated uh, OSs and, and supporting applications. Is you know this is something that had mainstream support in it in 2016. Uh, clearly, funding was an issue for these guys, and when funding's an issue, then you know mistakes will be made. Uh, the BIOS password was set, so they actually did take care to secure most of these devices. Um, BitLocker encryption. Uh, I tried a few things. It wasn't a Seagate. Wasn't uh, uh, susceptible to the null password attacks that came out um, in the past year. Uh, Bitcracker did not work uh, because of the encryption with TPM. I did see a submission for uh, Black Hat this year for something called BitLeaker that apparently can get these things, uh, get the actual key. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's, that's going to be interesting to keep an eye out for. Um, auto login enabled, so there's actually, uh, again, I, I had never come across uh, a cash register system before uh, being a line of work that I do, but apparently you can only put in like numbers. It could actually doesn't accept keystrokes, but um, uh, so that was kind of interesting on, on, on that. 
Um, and again, there, the devices we did find, there wasn't a place to put some of that. There was R sync, and we tried brute forcing that, but couldn't get any, uh, couldn't get anything to work. So. So here's kind of the stuff that I have now that's sitting in my house. So I have some fun screensavers, and that's what the application actually looked like. Thinking about maybe making a fun program for my daughter or something else. Not sure what I'm going to do with this just yet. Probably end up selling it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wiping it first, and then selling it. So if you're curious, when I talked about uh, how we actually started looking at some of that stuff. If you've never uh, defeated the BIOS password, there's just a little jumper on the motherboard you can remove. And, have fun from there. Okay, the handheld scanner. So not a whole lot here we could do with this. Uh, the main thing that was really interesting about this is uh, if any of you were at DEF CON last year, there was actually a talk called uh, uh, for a tool called Barcone. Or, yeah, Barcone. Sorry, it's tough to say. Uh, where you can actually scan a barcode and it'll send, uh, send actual uh, uh, commands to the um, to the computer, which is really, really cool. Um, I couldn't, I didn't get this to work because the particular scanner I had uh, wasn't, didn't have barcodes for it uh, like the guys had. They had, uh, I think, some Motorola and some other ones. So that wasn't, uh, that was going to take significant development time to do that. Unfortunately, time was not on my side, so I did not get a chance to uh, to test that out. But that would be kind of cool to see if that if that actually worked because again, this is an embedded system. It only accepts certain commands, so. Uh, so if, if one, somebody wants to take that on, that'd be awesome. You could do some research and figure that out. So, um, so moving on, the mobile computers. Uh, so nothing here. There was a, uh, a Reddit thread that talked about these, and apparently DDCAB was the password. That unfortunately did not work with ours. And based off of what we could probably get on that, it wasn't worth the time and effort. So we kind of skipped over that one and said, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll save that one for later. And, uh, and all of this takes a lot of time to go through and put together. And so this is going to be an actually living presentation. I actually have to do this again in, in June. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to do it in June. Uh, and so I do plan on adding this presentation as we keep getting uh, more and more time um, to do these kinds of things. So, so that's the meat of what we actually found. Uh, so again, this kind of poses the question of like, you know, how, why did things go so bad? And one of the things I'm truly interested in is, you know, the, the employees didn't care, uh, first of all, because there, there seemed to be no streamlined process of what they should be doing. Um, and, of course, they weren't getting their severance, so they probably, probably really, really didn't care. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other retailers that are going to go bankrupt. Uh, this year, Payless Shoe, Shoe Source is closing 2,100 stores. Uh, Gymboree is closing 800. Uh, Shopco is 363. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle these liquidations and when they're trying to get rid of equipment. And uh, an actual question for all of you guys, and if you know this, the answer to this, like please, you know, come tell me later. Uh, but where does the liability fall? So I mean, I bought this, this all this stuff. So do I now own that data? Am I now personally liable for someone else's PII? Can Toys R Us be held accountable for selling me and being negligent? Like I truly don't know that answer. So if you know it from a legal perspective, like I would absolutely love to know that because uh, I think that'd be really useful info. So, all right. So that actually does it. Uh, short and sweet. Uh, any questions? How much did that equipment cost? About eighteen hundred bucks. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We were stoked to find that out. <laughs> yeah, well, so once you figured out that you gotten the sense of information, how did you secure it? Oh, that is a great question. Uh, still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually tucked away. It's not connected to a network or anything. It's on a hard drive that's encrypted. So that's at least what I did to, to secure it. Anything else? Okay. Are they selling the hardware at the beginning of this bankruptcy, or was it just after they sold everything else and they were selling this? So. The way it worked is, like I said, my wife was still checking out. She was buying stuff. Um, so um, you could go in there, and there was a catalog, and you could literally pick out what you want, and they put your name on it. Uh, and I believe then, and so whenever they actually closed their doors on, like, the very last day, I, we went and picked it up. But uh, at that point, again, everything was mishandled. So even the stuff that we had put our names on, they just went ahead and sold. So we were lucky to get what we did. And when we went in there, uh, it was, they literally said, like, 
at the very end of it, we're like, well, you, you got rid of this, and we put our name on it like we want it. And they're like, you know what? I don't care. Just take it. So we only wanted one printer, and we ended up with four. So again, no one cared. So it's crazy. I, I, I'm going to ask when I, I have a microphone so I can be loud. Um, and I apologize if this repeats anybody else's questions. Um, there was a big uh, store closing um, shop closed stores uh, in Wisconsin. Are you from Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. uh, do you know if any publicity has been done for their employees or customers with this type of information, um, saying that you know maybe you guys need to do something to protect yourself, or Shopco needs to put someone in charge of verifying that these devices were destroyed and or wiped? Yeah. So. Uh so I actually did mention Shopco because I was doing some research yesterday to figure out you know, who else is uh, closing shop. But uh, I would love for this to be a shining example of what not to do. Uh, so helping that get, getting out there on social media, maybe doing more articles, uh, of course talking to you guys. Like I would love for that to get out more. Uh, but I haven't done a whole lot of research on Shopco, uh, especially not being from here. So, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, if we can bring awareness to this, I think it would be great. Now that I brought up this toy. So, I've lived through New Boston, the store, Boston store. They closed in uh, last year, I think. Okay. Do you know how, like, information about they, how they handled it? The, how who handled it? Uh, New Boston store. The Boston store? Boston, another retail. Yeah, closed it. Oh, I, no idea. I haven't heard about that like, one. Oh, okay. I've heard about that. Well, thank you very much. Let's have a round of applause.